Hello Factory fans, here's a really quick guide to help you dive into the Factorio 2.0 Space Age expansion. We'll assume you've already reached Blue Science as your starting point. I'll walk you through the steps from Blue Science all the way to launching your first space platform and producing White Science, so you can keep progressing through the Space Age content. Let's get started. First, we need to get to space and deploy our first space platform. So to launch a rocket, you'll need to research Rocket Silo. In the Space Age expansion, you only need Chemical Science or Blue Science to research the rocket silo. So once you have Blue Science, you just need to follow this research path over here to unlock the rocket silo. This will also give you access to all the basic space platform stuff that you need to get started, such as the Space Platform Foundation and the Space Platform Starter Pack. Once your research is complete, you'll notice a new tab in your crafting panel for space. And in there, you'll have four starting items, the rocket silo, the cargo landing pad, the space platform foundation, and the space platform starter pack. To start, we need to build ourselves a rocket silo. You're gonna need a thousand steel plate, 200 processing units, 200 electric engine units, a hundred pipe, and a thousand concrete. Now you can place your rocket silo anywhere, but it needs a steady supply of processor units, low density structures, and rocket fuel to continuously build these rocket parts. And as it builds rocket parts, you can see these rocket progress bars fill up and there's two of them. Once it reaches 100, you'll be able to launch rockets. Now to reach space, you need to start by building a new space platform. And you can see it says here that your first rocket must contain a space platform starter kit, which is one of these things. You can find this in your space tab. And if you go over here, you can see the space platform starter kit requires steel plate processing unit and this new space platform foundation, which is right up here. Space platform foundation only requires steel plate and copper cable. Now you're gonna need a ton of space platform foundations for your build. So I suggest you set up some sort of assembler to produce these automatically and just get a lot of them. Once you've got all the materials and built your space platform starter pack, you just need to put it into the rocket inventory. And then if you have your rockets completed, you'll be able to build a new space platform. When you click this button, it's going to ask you to name the space platform. So you can call it whatever space platform one. Then when you hit create, it will start launching that base platform. You can see your rocket will go up and launch. And off it goes. Now to view your space platform, you need to use the remote view and that's now done by hitting tab. And once you hit tab, you can see there is a new panel on the left here that shows you all your space related stuff. Clicking on the space platform will then take you to outer space and you'll have a remote view of your very first space platform. You'll notice there's nothing on your space platform besides this space platform hub. And inside the space platform hub, it starts you off with 10 space foundations. Building in space is similar to building on the ground. You just hit B and then you select what you want to build. I recommend you set up a new toolbar and drag all your space related stuff onto that toolbar. That way it'll be a little bit easier to build and to build you just click and build just like you would on the ground, except all the building is automatic. And you can see very quickly we run out of space platforms. To continue expanding, you're going to need to send up your building components to the space station the same way you did with your starter kit via the rocket. So you can just drop stuff into the rocket inventory and you can see you're going to hit this one ton weight limit pretty quickly. So you're going to have to send everything up you need in batches. Now I recommend to get started, I would send up something around like 50 belts, some longhand inserters, a few fast inserters, some solar panels around four. I just use one electric smelter, a couple of assembling machines, as many space platforms as you can possibly send up. Uh, I get three asteroid collectors and three crushes as well. Now in your space tab, you'll find some of these new buildings like the asteroid collector and the crusher over here. Now I recommend you set up some assemblers to produce these automatically. I've got one producing the asteroid collector. I've got one producing the crusher one for the cargo bay and one for the cargo landing pad. Just because in future, if you wanna expand your space infrastructure, you're gonna probably need a lot more of these. So just have these crafted via assemblers automatically instead of handcrafting. You can obviously handcraft your first few to just get you started. All of these need very similar materials. So down here, I've got a belt weaving going with four materials. It's just the electric engine, the blue circuits, uh, the low density materials, and finally just some steel plates. 
Uh, the cargo landing pad thing will require concrete as well, so I was just manually feeding it in from the side, but I only need like one of these, so it's fine. Now, it'll probably take a few rocket launches, but once all your required building infrastructure has been sent up to space, we can start on our space platform build. This is the one that I've done. It's a very quick and simple setup just to get some white science going. Now, it's not in ratio or anything. It's just to get you started. So first, we need to power everything. And to do that, on my right, I have four solar panels. Next, we have the asteroid collector, and they need to be placed over here on the edge of your space platform. Once you've placed one down, you can see it'll just start collecting any asteroid that comes within this range of it. And there's three different types of asteroid it can collect. This metallic asteroid, this carbonic asteroid, and this oxide asteroid. And they'll all sort of mix in here. To prevent them from mixing and hindering your white science production, I've chosen to keep them all separate. So I've got three separate asteroid collectors. You can see it just grabbed an asteroid. You can set the asteroid to filter uh, a specific asteroid that it picks up so it won't collect these other random asteroids. This one is specifically designed to collect carbonic asteroid. This one is only going to collect the oxide asteroid. And down here I have a third one only to collect the metallic asteroid. This probably isn't the most efficient method. You could all also just have one asteroid collecting everything and then use like filters to filter it out and get them processed separately if you want to do that. Now, once the asteroids have been collected, they need to be crushed. So I've built a crusher next to each asteroid collector and they need to be fed in via an inserter. So you can see here, we've got uh, an asteroid collector for the oxide asteroid and then it's being fed into a crusher. Now the crusher needs to have its recipe set so it can crush metallic carbonic or oxide. So you need to set that, make sure you do. You can see a carbonic asteroid will crush into carbon. The oxide asteroid will crush into ice. And finally, the metallic asteroid will crush into iron ore. You'll also notice that all of these asteroids also can output the asteroid itself. I guess it can fail to crush and they will feed onto your belt over here like this. So make sure if you don't want to get that jam, just set your filter inserter for the desired material that you actually want to come out, which is the actual crushed item and not the uncrushed asteroid. Next, we need to process the iron ore coming out of your metallic asteroid crusher into actual iron plates. For this, I've chosen to use an electric furnace, but you can use anything you like. You can use the coal as a fuel source if you want to use a steel furnace, I guess. But electric furnace seems to be the easiest method. So iron feeds in, plates come out. Very simple. The ice and carbon is very straightforward. So straight out of the crushers, I've got ice feeding into one side of a belt and carbon feeding into the other. Both of these belts for the iron plates, ice and carbon just come down somewhere and they will feed into your assemblers. And then in your assemblers, you can just select white science. And obviously the white science recipe has now changed or well, it used to just directly come from space, right? Well, now it has a recipe and it requires ice, two iron plates, and one carbon to produce. So if you have these two belts and you just feed it into your normal assemblers, just like normal, it's very straightforward. It'll make white science. Once your white science is produced, you need to feed them back into your central space platform hub for delivery back onto the planet. You can do this however you like. I've got a couple directly feeding in and I've got a couple going onto a belt and feeding into there. And you can see your white science will slowly start to accumulate in the space platform hub. Now to get your white science back to your planet, you're going to need a cargo landing pad. You can find this in your crafting space tab over here. Once you've built that, I would recommend building it somewhere near your science setup, like over here, for example. It appears it doesn't really need power, but you can build it anywhere you like. But obviously, it makes more sense to just build it uh, right next to where your science is going to actually go and feed the labs. Back on our space platform, if you select your central space platform hub, you can send anything you want back to the planet by putting items from here into the orbital drop slots. So for example, if I just drop this white science over here, you can see it instantly disappears. A little rocket comes out and it will send that back to the planet. We go back to the planet. After a while, you'll see it land. And here it comes, dropping off my white science back to the cargo landing pad. And now we have white science coming out here. We can obviously just feed it onto a belt somewhere and they will go into your science labs and you can start researching stuff that requires white science. Now, you might be asking, how would you automate that? Well, it's pretty simple. You just add a logistics request over here on the right. So you can go over here and you can select white science. You can see with my logistics setup, it's now automatically sending off the white science via little dropships back to base continuously and automatically. 
And that's it. You should now have an automated small trickle of white science to use for researching new technologies, such as your space platform thruster. And that should allow you to continue your progression in the space age content. Now, obviously, if you need a lot more white science, you're going to have to scale up this production. And these asteroid collectors are not very efficient. Uh, I feel like I'm always short on ice, but you can always scale all this up. If you need more assemblers, just expand your asteroid, build more assemblers. If you need more asteroids, just uh, expand everything and build more asteroid collectors. But I'll leave optimizing this build to you guys as homework. I'm sure you geniuses can come up with some amazing optimal build to get like one science per second or something like that out of this asteroid. But this should definitely get you started. And I found it all a little bit confusing. So I hope this guide has helped you. If you learned something from the guide, don't forget to like and sub. And you can check out my full Space Age Let's Play series on my channel. And I'll have a link in the description as well. Thanks for watching.